Okay. Okay. <laughs> now what? Alright, Sharon, can you give us an update on the next set of things we're gonna be doing again? It is All the beautiful beautiful people from Africa for the Africans. Our next stop is going to be lunch. Ooh. At Moyo. Swahili name, it means hot. Hot. Kadoof, 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 hot. So that is our next stop. There's Charlie's Bakery on the left hand side. Delicious pastries. Charlie, kind of young, kind of wild, Charlie. Wow. Where's the choice? Yeah, hopefully we don't run into the processor oh, because we don't want them to turn our vehicle over. No. So sometimes these movie shoots, this is a movie shoot. A lot of movies get shot here. Um, also we um, have, I'm also, this is my second job. I am an extra in different movies and adverts and all of that. You be getting your hustle on. Sorry? You know, we call it, you get me a hustle, hustle. on. <laughs> me like y'all did, that's working and, yes. and you know, I've got make to, it happen. I've got to survive. <laughs> you got to make a living, right? Yeah. Don't worry, I'm, don't worry, I'm going to make you famous. Oh, yeah, on your videos on YouTube. I'm a stick of I'll be your agent though, you gotta give me 50%. Something will go viral. <laughs> Maybe sometime. I'll think about something before you leave. Before the day's over. <laughs> I'm gonna get out my Sharon Spielberg moves. But yeah, I appreciate you uh, being real with us, not watering down anything. Oh, thank you, uh, sir. I get on people who do stuff like that. I'll be on them. Anything for. Africa for the Africans. <laughs> okay, um, we didn't know about that. I'll just show you the District 6 area now when we pass through. All right. So that you can see where that actually took place in 1966. Like I said, fam, everywhere you look, you're around the mountains. So, it's like, wherever, whatever we shoot or whatever we do, we always see Table Mountain. It just seems like that. Yes, that's the iconic feature. Which is now on our right. And, and fam, I keep saying it, it just reminds me of aspects of Rio de Janeiro and you know, the mountains and all those things. It's just like the landscape. And then it's positioned the same you know, below the equator. The weather, the season is about the same. Yeah. And then, yeah, both that both so-called rainbow nations. Yeah, the rainbow <laughs> yeah. nation. That's well, um, Brazil is kind of the same. Yeah, and they're mixed. Sometimes I think they're crazy because you can have like ten shades of black. Like they give it these names. I was like, how you come up with all these names because someone one shade lighter, one shade lighter <laughs> up. I was like. But then, you know, one of our historians, Ronald Karashidi, mentioned that in the Indian um, history and culture, they got like under untouchables, like the darker you get. If you look to the left now, oh my God, that damn is it, the District 6 drop. area there. You'll see it now again as we pass this building. So in 1950, the Group Areas Act was drawn up, and in 1966, it came into action. You see all these open spaces, there was the vibrant community of people that lived here. And um, we moved out of our really nice house that we had and we moved into the township close to the airport that we saw yesterday. Yeah. The people here, they refused to move. Bulldozers were sent in and flattened their homes. So that was the history of the District 6 area right here on the left hand side now. Yes, I mean, that's the, the history never changed, y'all. Wherever these folks go, they want the best land, and if you got what they want, they're going to displace you. So be prepared for fight. And that's kind of the history of every country I've been to. And our beautiful city of Atlanta, Georgia, is being taken over like this. 
bulldozers have been coming and knocking down different parts of the area. I mean, it's the same. It's the same history everywhere we go. I notice. Yeah. So you know, it's like investors with big money coming and they want to build, build up the city and do certain things. And like, we got a power to this, displace you. And what you gonna do? Next two. So appreciate you sharing that information on Langa because I've been looking at that and didn't know much about these townships. I remember I first came here, I was like, what is that all them shacks? Yeah, so. Yes. And next time, you know, we're going to drive to your neighborhood and, and, and check it out. I think next time when we do the township tour, I'll take you into the our colored communities. Perfect, since we did it uh, a lot to the other well, one. You know, like add it to the townships. Oh. Add, add it to, the, to your township tour. Here we can see Robin Island also now from this point. Oh, wow. on the far left, just behind us. So Robin Island, um, rubber, it means seals. So they, went, they went over there with a the boat and they hit this place and it was uh, a whole lot of seals. So they called they call it Seal Island, Robin Island. And uh, Afrikaans were. And first it was uh, a leper. They sent all the lepers there. It was a leper colony. The uh, Robin Island was a leper colony. And once leprosy was all healed, it became a, um, uh, what do you call this thing? A mental institution. So they had, for a few years it was uh, what do you call a mental institution? Yeah, sure. Psychiatric home for the, mentally ill. The G building, the crazy building. And then, <laughs> then um, after that, the lighthouse keeper stayed there for a while. And then it was the British naval base. And then it became the South African naval base. And then it became a prison for political prisoners. And that <laughs> is where Mr. Nelson Mandela, after 1963, there was the Ravonia trial. Mr. Nelson Mandela was caught with ammunition, all his men, they were sentenced at the Ravonia trial for life in prison. And the political prisoners were all sent to Robben Island. He spent from 1964 until 1982 at Robben Island. He got severely ill, all sorts of bronchial infections, um, sleeping on a cold, ice cold Atlantic Ocean, the cold Banguela current in the middle of this ice cold um, ocean on a floor like this that we are driving on now a concrete floor can you imagine that we thought it was cold this morning on the mountain but it was nothing compared to yeah. the experience that mr nelson mandela had when he was in prison yeah. also they were not allowed to um to send any letters or any mail out to their families and what they did was there was a tennis there's a tennis court. I don't know if you saw it on the at the Robin Island and what, they, what the prisoners did was they took the tennis ball, they cut a slit in it, they wrote all their letters to their families, put it in the balls, they would hit it over the fence and they could their contact would pick up all these balls and take it out to the mainland to their families. And also they would sit in the open, in the field, that is why his eyes was affected so badly, his tear ducts um, was affected so badly that he could not even shed a tear in the last years of his life because he was sitting on those fields with taking the, the rocks and having to make the mortar powder with the knuckles and when the priest came from America and all over the world, Germany, all the press came to see what is happening at this prison, what is happening here with the, with, the, with the political prisoners. They would take them indoors and they would give them postman bags to stitch with needle and cotton. And as soon as the press left, they were back in the lime quarries. Mm. On the right hand side, on the right hand side, that is the oldest university in South Africa, the University of Cape Town. Now, back in the time of segregation, this university was reserved for white English-speaking students only. The University of Stellenbosch was for white Afrikaans-speaking students. So, there was no university for black people, because black people were not allowed to have an education. I suppose 
They were afraid should they educate a black man, he might just become the president of the country. So that was also why our country is in the state that it is in at the moment. It's because of the lack of education for black people. That is why we still have thousands and thousands of people living in townships because we were not given the opportunity to study, to go and get papers so that we can have an income that can go get us out of the township and go into a suburb like this that is reserved for white people to buy pr a property, give the, take the kids to good schools. We had, I got the education at school because of where I lived. So even now, if you go into white schools, uh, or if you go to the, into the townships, you didn't see one white person there, am I right? No. Not one. Now you go to some of, you go to the white schools, you will find a handful of black kids there. Now that we can uh, go to university, the university is filled with all color students. And that is all thanks to Mr. Nelson Mandela. Freedom, he gave us. Khorishlashla, Madiba. We love you. God bless Africa. And God bless America. How about the hell with America? I saw something, I saw something on TV though. Uh, it was a brother talking about the financial system of the country and how uh, the, these corporations, how much taxes they pay towards public education, towards having bathrooms in the township. How much, how is that going? That's what's going to really change. It's the economics of the situation, not just the, you know, we love uh, uh, Madi, but yes, he gave the freedom of consciousness. But now you have to do yes. structural economic systems. buildings, and that's that to me seems a little they faking out people with right. this stuff. They pumping a lot, Madi, Madi. Okay, where are the monies for these things? You're talking about the education, the. Uh, transitioning these townships. I mean, you know, I know it's not going to happen overnight, but you can start the process. And maybe they are starting the process. Is that correct or not correct? Yes. Okay. Like, for example, in Langa, where we passed yesterday, okay. you will see like um, two thirds of Langa has already been rebuilt into proper structures okay. from, um, from the shacks okay. into proper structures with electricity, with water, with all the luxuries that people have had all these years. I mean, okay. living in a shack, if you go there, there's so many kids. If you go to the Red Cross Hospital, you'll find so many burnt black kids. Because what do they do in the townships? They have paraffin uh, stoves. Yeah, the stove. they, they have, um, they make fires in order to, to cook and to make their food and things like that, gas burners. So there's all sorts of incidents happening because of the lack of proper housing. But I'm saying, how are we going to get to that? Because the brother on TV was saying that it's been 25 years, and he's saying that the structure of the financial system in this country has not shifted at all. I mean, maybe like 1% towards resources for these things. And so that's the part that changes. That's what we had to deal with in America, too. And it's still disproportionate, but that's where uh, how many, uh, like, black politicians is it an equal the number of Africans in this country so the teachers the council is it an equal so if a population 40% is the leadership 40% if it's African people is that here in Cape Town there's still so much changes that needs to be made now okay. I I see we a lot of the problems lie like when it was the white government that was in control of the country you had all the white folk on the what we call the gravy train yes yeah now uh -huh. the tables are turned and the gravy train is even bigger okay I but is it getting to the people i think one of the things it's I, 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 getting yeah. to the people but it's getting to the people that are on the top okay. in the government sectors can i can i they, add one thing um, one of the things I heard about was um, the way the, the the employment structure was. At one point, it was like the white folks had like 90% of the jobs, but now something was put in place called um, what was the what was the, the the bill that was put in place to where a lot of white people black ended up losing their jobs and then more black, black people started economic getting empowerment. Perfect. Can you give more details about that? That's one of the things I wanted to hear so more about. So that is also what 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 is happening now. Like the 
before it was white folk that had all the jobs black people were domestic workers gardeners um the artisans the builders the construction workers and they were at the bottom at the bottom of the the income brackets and now and we all had all the white folk were they were in the offices they were the ceos the managers and now the tables are turned because now the black people are in power and you'll find all the white folk second best to getting jobs you have to wait even and especially colored people we are always stuck in the middle when it was the white folk in charge we were always in the middle and then the black people were down there now the black people are up there when it comes to jobs and everything else and we are sort of just passed by right that's what the group said that y'all don't know where you fit into this yeah that's what he said exactly that's right. Yeah. But I think also because there's no real in infrastructure over in the township until you get some infrastructure there, like buses and all those other things, your employment base is not going to increase because people can't get to the jobs. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of infrastructure that's needed there so that the economic part of it will grow as well. Ma'am, in the townships, there are the infrastructure there is every, every township has a, has a train, a train station, yeah. railway station, and they have buses, and they have taxis. Okay, so there are buses in the township that can bring people out if they get a job? Yes. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, we were in the township yesterday, we saw bus lines That's coming through. Trains, taxis, so but that, 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 that the structure is in place. So, But one of the things I wanted to make as a point was, they they work they 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 made some progress in economics. I, you know, it's like I gotta get it to them because I came here 14 years ago. 14 years ago, not saying like a whole lot is changing and we're all on top and everything, but I think people are saying that they're moving in the right direction and the more that others can put into work, you know, probably can transfer the nation more and more. But uh, yeah, I'm just saying that. I mean, I've been in real estate and it's like you gotta see where money is allocated because the township and I know it's a hard process. But just the one, again, trash pickup and, uh, you know, the electricity. So you said, you said the townships don't have any electricity? No, no, some of, them, some of them are making a little bit of progress. Some of, in, the township, in the township where the shacks are, right. there's, there's electric uh, lights, the, the, the street lights. Okay. So what happens is they take the cables and they connect it to the street light and then they take it down into the into the shack. Right, but but, that's but which is very free. dangerous. Yeah, that's free. I mean, that's, it's like but stealing that's not how, electricity. So it's well, not it's not proper infrastructure. Then. Right, that is not so. proper infrastructure. Yeah, so right. then you yeah, can yeah, transition that yeah, instead of them stealing it for free, sit, give them a plug exactly. to, to plug into. Exactly. I mean, spend the money on that, and you know, I mean, and, and then over time, as they want more, maybe that'll be free, and then as right. they want to. Add more devices. You might charge ten rand. You know, I mean, you you have to build it in a structural way that's fair, but and that's the part I'm concerned about. That is this country doing that, or they still holding the whites with all the economic resources, and then you still. And it, it's been only been 25 years. I understand that, but hopefully, this next 25 years, we need to see. You know, that's, that's the direction we need to move. That's the direction saying we need okay. to move to. Absolutely. Right. Okay. And she's here every day, so I mean, do you see the progress? Very slow. Very yeah. slow. <laughs> and as I said, even the monies, there's so much monies that's being abused, okay. abused by our government. Okay. Yeah, that too. Yeah, exactly. So it's being abused and they are just all pocketing the money. Yes. Yeah. Wherever Corruption. they can Corruption. get and take, it's not about the people. Right. right. Yes. Right. That's true. We'll yeah. agree. We'll give you that one. Yeah, because yeah, I'm like, how, the, how can you have porta parties? that they only clean and pick up twice a uh, or work tw once a week. What is that? Yeah, that was a shame that yesterday. That was definitely a shame. Outdoor toilet or what? That's ridiculous. Yeah. This is 2019. Team, right. I mean, they and, got and technologies you, out there that exactly. can, can deal with that. When I was running marathons, that's what they put on the street for us to use. Yeah. And but to say that this is your bathroom, that's, a, that's ridiculous. And if also, ma'am, if they put up all these things, like, the um, ablution blocks, people, uh, the buildings, like if they had 
like a whole big building, just the pollution blocks, for yeah. example. Yeah. People carry out the basins, the toilets, they rip at the pot. They destroy what they get. Well, Even at the universities and the technicons when they have, um, when they have, like they're supposed to have a peaceful, um, a peaceful strike, yeah. they will destroy, they will burn down the university. Right. Break down their computers, their laptops, things that they need to educate and better themselves. Yeah. So, so the problem. Yeah, we have, yeah, we have a lot of work right. to do, um, yeah. and right. we have a long yeah. way to go. But uh, for the ANC to be in power and that and those communities yeah. look like that, I think people are saying that a lot more could have been done, and we have to move a lot smoother. But yeah, and even yeah, even for example, like I told you yesterday about yeah. the um, the trains. Yeah. They just burn down the train. It's the only mode of transportation, the cheapest mode of transportation to get from the uh, townships to the city or to their jobs. They burn down, I don't even know how many trains, it was 61 million rands worth of damage in a few days. So now the people can't even get to work to earn their money to to feed themselves, for example, I think as basic to, as that. I think we have to okay, welcome to, look at all to uh, Kirsten Bosch, Botanical Gardens. This is where we 